Hello everybody, it's me, Brian Schubring again, the Music Man. This is going to be a preview episode, so this is going to be before episode 1, 2, or 3. And then I'll come out with uh, episode 4. Um, this is dealing with uh, this Scottish uh, piece of uh, music here. It's just uh, one sheet in that. And I'm going to do more of a preview of mostly Ultramuse 3 for the Color Computer 3. And um, if you do have an MM1 or uh, Linux and you do get a hold of uh, the Linux version of it, um, a lot of this will also apply to that also. So anyway, so the purpose of this is just to overview Ultramuse 3, give you a better insight of the information about the program more of the details on how to do certain things in that and also just a little bit on uh, the score and I'm going to be using the uh, score that I started working with as the example so let's see here Okay, let's capture that window. Okay, as you can see here, this here, this is the score, which is Hill. Now, a couple of things that I made an error on, of, essentially, was that, and you know, I forgot quite a bit of my music theory uh, over the years since I didn't really use it, but uh, all of a sudden came smacking back at me and says, oh, wow, I was wrong. Um, if you're taking a look, at these notes here I was saying that all these dotted these are dotted notes they're dotted notes um, the dotted notes pertain to extending the length of <clears throat> the note for the duration though it's a durational mod um, so like this here is a uh, an eighth note but it's dotted so that it's an eighth note but with the length of a sixteenth note added on to it. So, in essence, this is like a, a quarter note or quarter note, two eighth notes, about a quarter note, approximately. But for this purpose here, they're trying to slur the, um, the sound a little bit so that it sounds a little more like a real instrument or that. So, that's what this dot is, though, to the side, you know, either to the front or to the back. Usually it's to the right side uh, for dotted notes. Now, these dotted notes here that you see up with the dot on top, that actually indicates staccato, meaning you, instead of having the whole note being played, it's actually more of an abrupt shut off approximately a 64th or a 32nd of a period faster than what the note actually implies. In this case here, it's an eighth note, so approximately, I think, uh, 32nd of a, of a period or so, it releases faster. And that I just want to make that clarification on here. And on some of the other notations here and that, you know, you um, you can look up the different note notations and some of the theory, like I was saying before in the other videos that you'll see, a carryover, so that it actually ties these notes together. So it's like one continuous note, and if it's it goes to a different note, it actually slides up to the next note. So it actually kind of slurs it a little bit. At least that's the effect. And... Um, Ultramuse does a pretty d decent uh, job on that. And I originally thought that, like in down here, that this staccato is effective for the upper and the lower. I'm taking the position that it's actually taking point on only the top row, on, this, on the top part of the nose, and not on the bottom part in here because if you take a look down here and this is why I'm saying this 
And if I can find where I saw that. Right in here, in this section right here, <clears throat> you've got these two parts plain here. And you've got the der this dermod here on both of these notes. And the same with the dotted notes here, both on the lower section and the upper section. So that's why I'm saying that it's only being applied to the top section. You know, and since there's only one voice re reality in this one here, like in here, you know, dotted for du duration, and then the staccato to abruptly shut off the note a little bit sooner. So it's more like ding, ding, ding. It's like dink, dink, dink. So it's more like a, a, a little bit harder, faster hit for the note. That's pretty much what the staccato does. And that there's other different notations also. And I'm going to kind of review just a little bit of that that uh, is on uh, in Ultramuse there. So I just wanted to just kind of point the, uh, a few of those things out about this particular piece of music so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about and that and ah, let's just get that just a little bit better okay so so without further ado let's go to and let's go over here and Let's see what we can see about the cocoa. All right, hopefully my audio is going to track. And for some reason, I'm not seeing my audio tracking. Oh, there we go. My audio is tracking. Good, 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 good. So. I'm going to run my little script that starts Ultramuse my way. And let's get this set up. Okay, now I will attach um, the document, the latest document I have. It's a text file, it doesn't have any real graphics in it, but. I will be able to show you here is now I have completed for the most part the it's oh, not the skyboat song that works too but I want to use the one that I've been working on now I did pretty much complete the um the score so and it's worked out pretty nice it, it actually sounded pretty good so the first thing that i want to make a point out to is for the layout you know for for setting up okay when you first start you know i went through that I, i'm going to go through that through uh the next video you know, in, the, in official number one, um, where you can set what type of clef or type of bar that this is going to be. Both of these are treble clefs. And then, of course, this is the bass clef. And you've got your different types of clefs here that you can select. And if you have, say, decided to <clears throat> add another part, either to the score, like if I want to add another part here, or if I wanted to add... Um, you know another clef you know I can do you can do that here and you can do some reordering and such like that um, you can also set a particular part you know either an octave above or octave below what is stated on the stave here so I just want to just show that here let's go back to the score so that's the, that's the layout okay so let's take a look at, at here you get the files menu allows you to create a new score, read a score, pen to memory, 
Uh, you can you know, save the score file in that. You can also take and write out the, the, so the score that you have in the, on the machine out to a new file if you want. Uh, I believe change the file name. Um, you can also select read-only mode so that it do, you cannot make any changes to the song. Um, instruments and etc. You can actually read and write um, everything here. You know, so like you can actually take and put your different. If you've got a, a piece that you've got for a particular synthesizer, and you have everything set up, all the percussions for for it set up perfectly, all the different instruments that you like to use, because you can have up to sixty four instruments here. Um, your MIDI channels are set up in a particular way, your volume levels, because you can actually set up um, the volume levels, because if you take a look at the score itself, you know, got like MF, P, F, those are the volume levels, that's just the notation that they use um, in the score itself so you can actually set up the different levels say like uh, in, instead of um, MF coming at level 56 you say maybe you want to actually a little bit louder or maybe even a little bit softer you know your own custom levels so that each of those codes because <clears throat> your particular uh, synthesizer may sound a little bit differently or is a little bit punchier on certain instruments and that or and that you can actually you know change that and then you can write out or read in uh, particular patches and that and you can just name it to what you want so that's what happens there um dir, dir non directories you know just show you it just shows you know shows shows where my uh, current directory is that I'm using and that it doesn't uh, show the songs in this but it shows all the different folders and also like the instrument and percussion uh, um, files also so let's just go back and cancel um, the presenter you can that this shows okay you can change the directory from where it is now to a particular directory let's say that you've got another folder on another drive and you want to change it to that because that's where you want to um, put the song now and that you can change it to automatically just doing that that's all that is for if you just press enter it just stays where it is uh, change the directory you can do that uh, title editor that's pretty uh, self-explanatory where you can change the different lines you just press the press uh, a number I'll press nine you type in what you want and you know then press enter where you go press enter again you're done and of course kill a disk file if you want you know delete a file and whatnot or quit well we don't want to do that uh, layout we took a quick look at already options this is just for setting up um, the options within ultra music and all that you know so you can and uh, when you're all set with everything you know no carryover snap cursors you know definitely uh, uh, would say keep that sticky instruments I never really did that you can set up your screen colors um, printer setup if you have a printer hooked up um, okay staff lines you can make them black or you can make them gray I would recommend keeping it gray like you see because if you make it black then it can be a little bit too bold and that compact display just means that from here to here you know in a measure it's not spread out as much it's a little more compact so that you can get more notes in so that's what so that's what it is uh, thick beams that's just the beat these are the beams here between the notes that uh, that are that are tied together um, debug plane all what that does is that just sets up a uh, a window that pops open and, and shows you the measures as it's played because it's because if you're previewing a song to see if there you made any mistakes such as like you know that it goes do 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 and but then you notice that it goes do 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 well you can see exactly what measure 
that, that any errors that you see are, and you just press the, uh, the break key to stop it, and you can go to that measure and fix it. It just helps you do that. Um, it can sometimes uh, slow down the plane a little bit if it's a super busy uh, piece, but usually you don't see that much, too much of a problem, especially if you've got a 6309 processor in it. Um, high-res mouse, if you have a high-res mouse, then use that. Otherwise, if you don't have a high-res mouse um, adapter, then you know don't select that. And then you can select whether or not it's a right or left mouse port. That, and then you can also, uh, if you want to hear little dings you know sounds in that you can select that also and then you can file the options mean save the options and stuff and then you know the status info just gives uh, the information about the, the uh, piece that you did so it gives you all your information right there so it tells you how much memory you've used and how much memory you got left and so on and so forth so, instruments. We've taken a look at instruments a little bit in that this is my expanded version here. What this is, this is just sets up the instruments. And uh, like I was saying before, for my particular synthesizer, this is not 068. That's actually 068. O meaning octo um some of the older synthesizers you instead of using a decimal they used an octo or eight instruments to each bank so you've got you can do up to 64 instruments total so you've got eight instruments on each bank and you've got eight banks and by placing the o in front and i will illustrate that let's just say that i want to take and add another instrument here. Let's go to 16. And so O, 38. I'm going to, you know, have choir, but what I'm going to do, you can actually change if you take a look. I see on these that have plus or minus. That indicates an octave, meaning that that particular instrument is going to be played either an octave higher if it's a plus or an octave lower if it's a minus in that and that just allows you greater flexibility especially if you are writing a piece where let's say you have a um, you're writing a piece and it's using soprano um, uh, notes where they're really high well you can actually drop it down by going minus if you were using a particular instrument that's already high already in that like you know really tinny so if you want to drop it down a little bit you know and else for doing you know some sp uh, specific effects so but anyway like i said so let's just go and make this plus choir just for grins and anyway, we've gone uh, if i wanted to i can go here and i'm just going to do 18 and new name minus choir so it's the same part oh you know i didn't do that right 18 that's O38. That was my bad. Name that. And there we go. So, you know, I have the same instrument three times, but in three different uh, variations straight, middle C, an octave higher, octave, an octave lower. So, that, that just allows you to have some interesting. And I'm going to actually take, and I am going to write this file, because that's another thing that you can do here. Write the file. Whoa, that's interesting. So, anyway. Let's just see where I'm at here. Directory. File directory interesting I'm 
Okay, so presenter. Ah, that's what's going on. Slash SD one slash music slash UMS. That's where I need to be. So now that I'm there, if I go back here to instrument. And I write this file out. This is the one I want to do. Press enter. We're right. Yes. I just added that. So, and there we go. So I wrote out the file so that if you want to use the same instrument patches in a different uh, piece of, uh, in different song that you're creating, you can just simply read it in and away you go. Um, you can copy, swap, move, uh, X out. Um, so you can do you can you can do things and you move things around a little bit here now percussion The percussion staff um, Allows you to have 17 percussion instruments This is set up for this here. You have to actually go through and take a look at the manual for your particular MIDI device and you need to, and if you have a drum kit, and you know, you obviously want to assign uh, this, in uh, this case, I'm using, for me, I'm using channel 16. So I signed, um, uh, if I have a percussion uh, bar, I assign all the, all the instruments that I have on there to channel 16. And, and then on my uh, MIDI device, channel 16 is dedicated to the drum kit. And, you know, for the drum kit that I'm using, I take a look at the list and I see each, what each individual device is and what the note number is. Now, these numbers here are not hexadecimal. These are decimal numbers. So in this case here, the kick drum on my particular synthesizer is, has note 36, which is uh, C1 on, uh, on the keyboard. So it, so it, uh. Wherever C1 is, that, that is what it's in. You'll see that on that. So usually it's a 36, and it's a pretty pretty standard uh, setup here. So, you know, you can do the same thing. You can read, a file, read, read the file. You can write a file. You can clear it. And then, of course, you can, you know, then the name of the synthesizer that you're using here, it allows you to, uh, you know, know exactly what synthesizers that you're using. Because sometimes... Especially if you've got a more elaborate setup, you could have a, a dedicated drum module and you just set it up so that it only receives information on MIDI channel X, in this case here, 16. And then on my unit, I can actually take in, uh, uh, channel 16, turn it off on, my, on the MIDI unit that you're using for doing the other voices, and boom, so you can have multiple setups in that. Um, so you can actually have, you know, either a synthesizer for each individual channel up to 16. Um, or you can have a unit that is multi-timbral, so you can actually have all the MIDI channels come through. So, you know, there's a lot of different options that you want to, that you can do in that. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is because I've got it now set. And... That's the instruments. Now, I am going to end this particular episode preview right at the moment to keep the file size down, and then we'll and I'll be right back with part two of the preview of going through Ultramuse. Be right back, folks.